Hey everyone and welcome to the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, aka The Design Ninja. And this is the place where you can develop and hone your ninja skills in all of your favourite Adobe desktop and mobile apps. In this movie, what we're going to take a look at is something that I actually discussed with Jesus Ramirez from the Photoshop training channel a while ago, and we've just done a collaboration on it. And it's my Photoshop technique for turning things into a pencil-like sketch, but in a single layer, which I did a while ago, but he had some interesting ideas on extending it. And you can see that if you visit his channel. It is well worth a look and do subscribe both there and here as well. So what we're going to do is extend that even further. I'm going to open up here in Photoshop a movie file. So if I go along and do open, I've got one here from Adobe Stock. There, like so. So here it is, open. You can see it's someone singing. And the reason I've chosen this is the being nostalgic. There's an old 80s or 90s video from a band called Aha who did this fantastic video that looked like drawings and it was really, really good. So we're going to emulate that. The first stage in doing this, because it's a really, really simple technique actually, is to target the video group here in the layers panel and convert that into a smart object. Now I'm just going to right click mine here. Okay, and you'll see that smart object is just there. Okay, so if I choose that, then it's ready to go because that means all of the effects that we apply here cascade down onto the video, but they're all editable. And it begins by going up to the filter menu and choosing Gaussian blur and then literally blurring the heck out of that. Right? So I've gone to about 45 here as a starting point, but as it's editable, that's just fine. And you might think, well, that's just bonkers, just looks blurry. Yes, it does. But we need to change something here. I'm going to come across to the blending sliders underneath the smart object here, double click on those, and I'll change the blending mode here to divide. Okay, and once I do that, you can see it looks very, very different. Okay, and of course, like I say, completely editable. So if I went on here, double clicked, and then tune this a little bit, so you can see if I bring that down, I've got a slightly different look. And it doesn't matter where you are in the process, you can change this whenever. I think I'm going to go just a bit further on there. Maybe something like that. About 26 is just groovy. Then I'm going to come along and choose the camera raw filter. So if I do that, that will open up like so. And all I want to do here, pretty simply, is a little bit of tuning and convert this to black and white. So I'm going to use a monochrome profile here if i just dial those open and take a look i'll try and find one nice thing is you can just hover over them and they'll change find one that kind of suits uh, the purpose i think this one here bmw 10 that works well i'll just come out for close and what i might do is make the underlying image a bit more contrasty you can see the effect that that's having just there maybe dip the exposure slightly too plenty of other things i could do but I think that's fine for now. So I'll hit OK. And already that's working pretty well. If we just zoom in a bit here, OK, you can see how that looks very, very different. But however, still not sketchy enough. The next step is to come along and choose something from the filter gallery. So what I'm after here is in the stylized section, OK, and it's glowing edges. Now, I think that's going to work pretty well as it is what i'm after is just some edge definition there if i hit ok and what i then need to do is go to the blending sliders for that double click on those okay and when they open i'm going to change this one to subtract like so and there you go i've got some really hard edges on there now that's not doing exactly at the moment what i wanted to do but the great thing is just a simple double click means that I can edit that. So I'm just going to change the edge width here down to one. And I think I'll change the edge brightness slightly as well. Just a little bit there. Make that a bit brighter and take the smoothness up a little bit too. There we go. Perfect. That's much better. 
Then I'm going to go back to the filter menu. Okay, and this time I'll come down to the stylize in the main section here and choose oil paint. Now when this opens, the first thing I want to do is turn off the lighting there. Okay, so get rid of that. We don't need that effect. That gives you the sort of shadow and highlight either side of the strokes and then just pretty much go crazy with it. So I tend to focus on an area that has the eyes in to determine that's the thing you'll look at mainly to determine how far I'm going to go with this. So I might make it a bit cleaner just there and maybe change the scale of the strokes might help a little bit, bring those down. And I've got maximum bristle detail on there as well. But you can always play with these until you get exactly the effect you want. In fact, if I take the stylization right the way up, you can see that that's gone crazy over there. But if I bring that right down, then I'm getting that nice effect okay but without too much of that if i hit okay just there you can see that's applied nicely and if i wanted to i could add one further thing onto this and i do sometimes especially if i'm after that sketchy look okay as i come down to filter here and to the filter gallery and then go into the artistic section at the top or the brush strokes and just play with whichever of those i think is going to give me a result so if I went for cross hatch here you can see how the oil paint is smoothing that out into believable sections but then the cross hatch is working on top dry brush is sometimes another good one to have a okay, colored pencil works pretty well if I change the paper brightness here to maximum this is getting much more like that aha kind of look just there if I change the pencil width here down to something like one or two then that's going to get even more extreme. Change the stroke pressure there. Okay, if I dial that up, and if I bring it down to about six, I think that would work excellently. And hit OK. And any of these things now can be changed. So if I thought the blur was too much in the very first place, then just double click through that. Okay, I'm going to bring that right the way down there, actually, down to about four or five. In fact, if I go up just a little bit there, towards six i think that'll work really really well and then that all gets redrawn like so and that's much more like it and you'll see that if i move along to different points in the timeline here it will render that particular frame and i can get an idea of how that's going to work then all i need to do if i want to actually see it go is to hit play but depending on the speed of your machine and also the length of the video and the amount of effects you've got there it may take it a little while to render. Okay, so if we just start this now, you'll see small areas appearing just above the video group that are kind of colored in there, and that's the render progress. Now, using the magic of this being a recording, what we can do is let that render, okay, and then we'll just have a look at that. So let's speed this bit up a little bit. Once it's done, all you need to do is to go up to the file menu, come down to export, and from there choose render video and choose your video settings. And there we go, and that's it for this particular movie. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments below. Reach out to me either here or on my Facebook group or Twitter, any of those places. But until next time, See ya.